So what I'm gonna show you guys really quick is how to set this up. And it's gonna be a little hard because like this is in the corner that I'm using here. Um, but I'll show you guys a little bit of how to set up uh, this SVG to come out like somewhat usable on the other end. The main trick here is you've got to use the layer names and you've got to use grouping. So we have a group here that's just this logo. And if we wanted to do anything with different elements in here, we're not gonna be able to in the current state. And what we would call this is maybe like hex logo. And by naming the layer here, we can export this as an ID. Um, so the ID is gonna come out, like it'll literally be in the SVG, it'll be called hex, hex logo. Now, again, if we wanna break this up more, so if we, if we come back to it, we can always re-export this. And we say like we want like more finite control over something like you would go into this and then bring the level of grouping from whatever these things are back up to the top which i'm not going to do um but back up to this first layer and then from there you would kind of like ungroup it and then rename anything else i don't really have much luck when you nest so i'm going to try to nest as little as possible um you can usually get away with things like nth child selectors and things like that if you need to hit a nested item. So we got the hex logo there and now we're gonna go through and group. So we take this and group it. Well, we'll make sure it's not grouped first. We don't wanna double group anything. So we have a few groups already, but turn those off. So that needs to be grouped. And then this needs to be grouped. And so now you can see it's everything's like really kinda down to just a few items here. We'll change this thing and we'll call this hero animation just so we have an ID to hit into. And then we'll take this guy and one by one name it. So that would be maybe um, red group or red paths. And I tend to use underscores here just to minimize the chance that a dash will screw this up. So I'm just going to do blue group. And when this is done, we'll kind of have a nice little tidy group of things that we can talk to using JavaScript or CSS or whatever we need to do. And I think this is the biggest problem a lot of people run into with these SVGs is that they don't do this part and then they, they'll try to bring it as an image and you know, you're sitting banging your head trying to figure out why you can't do anything to it. Okay, so now we've got that, we'll save it as the hex hero we'll save that as an ai first so we can come back and fix it later we're going to include that in the repo for the project we want this in its current form because we're going to simplify uh something is going to get minified or simplified as we export it so we're just going to export it as so we've got a hex hero we won't we're going to have to click use artboard so it clips um and we're just going to say range of one export now when you get to this end like you can see the object ids so we get it from the layer names so that's how we're going to do that. The images are going to be preserved, but there shouldn't be any images in here. If we find out there's images in here, we take them out. Uh, the font thing here says convert to outlines or SVG. Just stick with convert to outlines. SVG is going to attempt to embed the characters, and you don't want that. Um, that can have uh, horrible results. You're, def you're definitely transporting copyrighted stuff at that point. Um, and then the styling is presentation attributes. So this is where we're going to override some of the things. We're going to use internal CSS for this. So it's going to write a CSS sheet um, inside of the SVG, and that's how we're going to be able to override these things without having to do things like bang important, right? So this can screw up. If it screws up, the reason it's going to screw up is it's going to overclass things. So it's going to see the same thing happening to a bunch of crap. It's going to create a class file for it, and it's just like not going to be the right pieces on the class file. So that could be a thing. So you just gotta keep that in mind. Um, we're gonna make sure that responsive is ticked on. We don't wanna minify it unless it gets humongous. So we'll just do a quick save and see what it's at. Uh, the decimal point, that's just precision levels. So that means it's gonna go to three points of precision. Um, I don't know where the fine line is there. So if, it, if you do one of these and it comes out a little weird, you just jank up the, the precision. And you don't wanna minify, uh, if you, unless you really, really see a problem. You don't want to do that because essentially that's going to take your code and compress it all down to a single line. So maybe you do that as a final step when you're done messing around with it. But if you minify and you have to go in and figure out why something's not doing the thing it's supposed to do, that information is going to be really hard to find minified. So we hit OK. And then bingo, bango, it just rendered this thing out. It's right here. It's 24K. That doesn't need to be minified at all. I'm just going to, we're going to leave it with the dash 01 because that's how Illustrator wants to save it. And it's a 
it is a um, is a file we can see, so we could open this thing up and just double check it. We could uh, open it into Chrome like this. It looks good. I mean, it looks like it's got a little bit too much margin at the top, but it might just be centering this thing. We can make double make sure that this thing is responsive, so we should be able to resize it like this. Yep. Yep. That means we could put it on a cell phone if we wanted to. No problem. We want to take a quick look at the code. We could look at the, the source right here. Yeah, you can sort of see how the classes sort of broke up. This is what I mean. Like Illustrator will do some funky things to try to figure this out. And it, as a result, has created 30 classes. But that's okay. Okay, we'll let that happen. But this just makes it easier so we could, like, we can see CLS 10 is a fill of that. And fill of that. So if we want to change the color of things, it makes it a lot easier. So I'm just going to grab that. Paste that in. Okay, save that, take a look. All right, so let's see if we can do some funky stuff here. So I want to, I want this to have the appearance of being drawn in. So we're gonna start, the start state for the hex group is gonna be no opacity, so we'll get rid of that. Um, the red group, blue group, magenta group, green group, and yellow group and orange group will all get the same treatment. So I'm gonna make another group here. Just in, if we wanna do specific things, we'll, back out but what we're gonna do right now is just make this all one combined piece of CSS so what we're gonna do is we're gonna to try to do this sort of like animation thing um, where they draw in now there is a kind of a way to do this we can I don't know if I have a plugin that knows this but we can kind of take a guess on how big those lines are and then we do a line dash on them and so if we look at what's about the size of one of those things so about, I would say about a thousand pixels, maybe all in. Um, I gotta, I should probably just look at something else I've built that takes advantage of it. So that's like, that's the example of using this technique, this little kind of stuff that scurries along. So stroke, dash array, and then dash offset. So that's saying like you're making an array of a, uh, well, we'll just do it. <laughs> so dash array and dash offset. And essentially what you're doing is you're saying like, I want dashes that are this big and I want this much real stuff and then this much uh, space in between them. And then the offset needs to equal these two things and it will loop if you do that. Uh, but this is a cheap way that we can probably achieve it uh, an effect where it looks like it's drawing in. So we're just gonna refresh it to make sure that's the starting state, okay? We're gonna set the stroke dash offset to zero as a starting state. What we need to do is we need to have the starting state rather be it's off screen. So the dash offset, just gotta get this tuned in. 100, you see how it's coming in? So if we set that to like a thousand, it'll come in even more. And that's what we want. Okay, so we'll say, we're gonna make it infinite just so we can watch the pattern. And we're just gonna say to go ahead and loop that. Okay, so we want it to start at the stroke dash offset 1000, and then go to the stroke dash offset. We'll try zero. Oh, we should be watching as this thing draw in one direction or the other. Okay, so that kind of like pops in. Oh, it's so cool. Okay, well, that blew my mind. I love this. Isn't that cool? That is so cool. Yeah. Speed it up a little bit. 